Hello everyone, it's DJ Riggs again with Managers Artists along with Barry Bakken and we're here to bring you part two of our trend focused demonstration, a sneak peek into our master class for IBS Las Vegas next weekend. Alright guys, so before you guys just saw that I was cutting Alyssa's hair, giving her more of that squareness right now, Barry's going to go and accentuate all of those elements for this Miller Mash type of a look. And remember, Miller Mash is a trend that's happening this season. Barry, you can go ahead and take it from here. Absolutely. Yeah. So what we've already done with Alyssa's hair was she was a level 8 as a base and we've already pre-lightened. We used short scuff blonde with 10 volume and just really made sure to be patient with our application and really thorough. So what I'm going to do now is actually a bit of something that we call session color. When, and session color is basically when you um, use something just for a moment. It's more of a temporary type of feel. So although this may look like purple Kool-Aid, it is actually a combination of what you would do sometimes when you do a color correction. So I'm not sure if some of you have done this, but what you can do when you're doing a color correction is use a pure pigment and mix it with water and actually dry it in to stain the hair. So that's what we're doing here. We have purple that's been extremely diluted to where it's going to be a lilac color. And then this is going to be a nice soft gray tone. So to create this, I've mixed blue, green, violet, and a little bit of orange. And that just creates a really neutral palette for us. So I'm going to use sponges and it's going to create a watercolor technique for this Mill Mash feeling. So, you know, you can get like a loofah, whatever, Dwayne Reed or Walmart, whatever. And then you can cut them into whatever size, shape sponges that you want. So I'm actually going to use sponges to be applying. And as DJ mentioned with the Mill Mash technique, what I want to do is really create and bring out the strength in that squareness inside of Alyssa's shape. Now, with this type of technique, what I'm going to do is actually just let this color that's mixed with water, it's a direct pigment, and I'm going to let that go ahead and just process and dry into the hair. So to get started, first I want to look at just the shape. So you can see here there's a nice squareness to it. So what I'm going to do is use the sponges and really bring out that feeling. So I'm going to highlight that on each side with the gray. That's where I'm going to start. And bring in the violet from here. Then I'm going to work more of a pattern through the rest. So what I'm going to do is just simply, I'm going to just use my sponge. I'm going to dip it into that water. Squeeze out the extra. And then what I want to do is just comb this in the direction that I want it to be. I'm going to put my hand underneath where I don't want that color to hit. And then I'm just going to use the sponge tap out some of the extra moisture to really apply that. And you can see the more I apply, the more it starts to get that gray tone. And it's not gonna be strong, it's something that can be layered. So you can see the more that I put into it and I'm just tapping, it's starting to be more of that pigment. I'm just working that in and then, then we're gonna actually just let that dry into the hair and that's gonna create a temporary or a session point of view. So my inspiration for Millimash, Millimash is a trend that is more of a military inspired trend, but it also is a mashup of military and theatrical. So, you know, think like Jimi Hendrix wearing, you know, more camouflage and then with some of the ruffles when he's performing. That's like a military mashup. So that's what this is all about. So it's mixing that femininity with masculinity. Now I'm going to use the violet and I'm going to come through the top. Same technique. I'm going to work here and start to work just down. And you can see, you know, it's subtle. This is more working to create texture with color and create an illusion with color rather than create something that's permanent. So this is quite often sometimes what we do when we're working um, at runway shows or photo shoots because when you're working with professional girls, sometimes it is definitely not about coloring their hair permanently. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Anything is, anything is game. All right, thank you so much, Sabrina. Shout out to Sabrina. Really like to have that as well. Donna Morolo saying that's great color and cut. Uh, you guys, feel free. We're going to hang around a little bit more as well because once Barry is done with this, we're going to let that sit and I'll be bringing out her model from before. So we're going to go ahead and actually create more of her filling with the Obi Lux technique that we're uh, going to apply with the hair cutting demonstration. So following right up from this, we'll just move right into that. But right now I just want to talk about this type of filling, Barry. I can see as the light is hitting that it's giving this kind of gradient type of feel. Do you, do you utilize light a lot of times when, it, when it's hitting the uh, yeah, application process? Absolutely, DJ. That's such a great point because color at the end of the day, the definition of color is how light reflects off of any given object. That's what color is.
So really, light is the source for so much, and that's really what influences the blending and the highlighting, because light can vary so much. I mean, I think we all know it as colorists inside the salon, when somebody brings in a picture, then, and you know, you're like, well, what is it that you like in that picture? Really, sometimes it's, they like the lighting. So instead of telling them, oh, well, it's the lighting that you like, it's more about thinking as a colorist, how do you create that effect of lighting with your technique? So you can see with this, you know, it's subtle. So I'm layering it on and the more I layer it, it's kind of like makeup in that way. When you're working with session color, it's a lot like when you're working with makeup. You layer it and you layer it and then it gives more and more. It's very different than coloring traditionally like in the salon where you're gonna color it, let it process. It's much more of a visual effect. So you can see, tilt your head up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you can see here already how that is gonna be starting to define that squareness in the haircut as well. I want to just touch on, uh, we have a question from uh, Dan, mm -hmm. big shout out to you Dan, Dan Edmund is asking what, uh, what are you using for the color? That's a great question Dan, so basically what I'm using is a direct pigment, a direct dye, so meaning it's not to be mixed with any developer. In this case I'm using Pravana Vivids, but it's diluted like amazingly with water. I'm talking like a, like a fingertip teeny bit of violet and then the rest is water. So how you can test that is on a piece of like white yarn or on an extra hair swatch that you might have just to see what that's gonna look like. And then in here, this is like a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit of violet, blue, green, and orange to create a gray. All right, and uh, Barry, they wanted to know if we're gonna have some pictures up. So just to let you guys know, we definitely will have uh, photos taken of our models and you'll see their related trends. So that way you'll know just how we interpret everything. So you'll see the models with the trend that they're gonna be in, and uh, we'll have a better shot of that. You guys can always check us out uh, at Main Entrance Artists, is our Instagram. Please follow us there and like us there to keep up with certain things. And also, as you guys, we talked about trend reports. That's what we're gonna be really bringing to the beauty industry, is giving out uh, this concept of you guys seeing trend reports that we have for sale at IBS for a show rate. So you guys be sure to check us out, and they have techniques as well as inspiration and just some great approaches to hairdressing that we think will help you guys grow your, uh, your career in hairdressing. All right, Barry, so what are we gonna do with so this part? So now what I'm gonna do, you can see that I've created the violet cast on the top and then more of the gray on the side. So now what I'm gonna do is use more of a creative technique of just kind of color placement. I'm not gonna think, overthink it too much. It's more of like a tonal situation and this gets like a little bit messy, but that's why it's just water. So it keeps it really easy. And you can see that I have Alyssa's head down so that I'm not, getting anything on her face. So you can see that I put that on and then I'm just sponging over it. So when you put your sponge in, you wanna just release some of that excess moisture. And this is a technique that you're actually not gonna rinse off. You're gonna let it dry into the hair and that's what sets it. But this is a very temporary type of feeling. So it's only gonna last maybe one, maybe two shampoos. But in the salon right now, I think that's a great option to have because we can see that a lot of our clients, they're more willing to do these creative shapes and these creative tones. However, they basically, you know, sometimes they don't want it all the time. And also, I'm just gonna hand this to you in case mm -hmm. you wanna cover it yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you can see here, on the last section, I just worked with more of a marbleizing technique. And I'm just gonna place this back like so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm gonna hold this towel underneath. Okay. And then I'm gonna take the gray, and you can see that as I see, it looks really pigmented, but it's really quite soft. And I'm just gonna layer that in. This is just gonna give a textural movement. It's almost like that Millimash vibe of a very subtle camouflage. If you think of camouflage in terms of like a brushed metal, that's the effect that we're going for. So the concentration is really on the edges of the hair, but this is just giving a tiny tonal shift. And it's okay to let those colors mash together. And for some of us, you know, like, this is a very different way of approaching and applying color. It's not, your traditional way. It's more of, you're almost like a colorist makeup artist for hair. It's, it's thinking more in a temporary sense. But you can see as that starts to set in, you can see the violets and that silver. So I'm gonna continue in this manner. I'm just taking horizontal sections, working my way back on the head shape. And I have the hair just slightly damp because I wanna just even out the porosity. And again, I'm just gonna place this towel underneath I'm gonna comb that section through and then I'm just alternating using a silver gray and more of the pale lilac and just alternating those two. 
And you can use these sponges almost like a stamp because you're working in such a watercolor way, when the color comes on, it's gonna bleed through. So you're layering them together, and that's what's gonna blend it. So you would definitely not wanna do this technique with real color, actual color. You ha could have a more pigmented version of what you're doing here. And this would also need to be done on pre-lightened hair to show up, because we're really just staining the hair, basically. So continuing back, and this is quite a quick thing. So in the salon, I could charge for this, and I would charge, you know, as more of a, a service. It would be more of like the same way that you do an updo. Think of it that way. You're doing a service for the look. You're creating it for a session and for a reason, but it's a temporary. Okay, coming back in with the silver now. And I think, you know, for those of us that are in the salons all the time doing you know, just regular classic color. It can be really scary to start to work this way with color because it feels like totally against every rule that you've ever been taught. But when you break out of that, the great thing is that you, when you go back to start formulating, you start thinking about color in a totally different way because it's a different part of your brain that you're tapping into. It's a different way of thinking about color and you'll find that your formulations, even your regular salon work, start to change and be influenced by that. So I'm almost done here, just working my way back, again using the towel, just to protect any drippage. And, you know, slightly combing. It's more about a slight fluctuation of tone. This is a very, like, subtle approach. You could definitely do this and add more pigment with whatever direct dye you're using. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually let this dry into the hair. And that's why it works so well on someone like Alyssa because she does already have a higher porosity because we've pre-lightened. So we're not going in and trying to stain this on hair that's dark because obviously that wouldn't work. We need the color to really soak in. And you can really start to see how that is softly blending. It really is like a watercolor. All right, great. Go a little bit over the metal mash uh, just... Absolutely. So Millimash is one of the key trends in our trend forecast for spring, summer 2017. And we start to gather those trends from looking at what's happening in fashion, film, art, architecture, and seeing where these key designers, these key influencers are being inspired from and what's connecting them. So Millimash is really inspired by more of a historical mashup. So it has elements of femininity and masculinity. It's kind of that hard versus soft. And it also is military, but also a little bit theatrical. So you're seeing these historical references. So think like a camouflage jacket with a Victorian ruffled shirt underneath. And how are we spelling that when we say Mila? What are we saying? M-I-L-A, M-I-L-I, mash. So military and mash up put together, guys. So I'm just gonna come to my last section here, but you can start to see the more that that's setting in, you're really starting to see that soft variation. And again, this is not something that you're gonna to wanna to rinse out. You're just leaving this in. So I'm gonna come back over one more time where I want it to be more concentrated because the more you layer, the more it's gonna be pigmented. I'm gonna put some more and really bleed in. So one of the keys when you're blending this is you can see the pressure that I'm putting. So you have a little bit of Alyssa, thanks. I'm putting a lot of pressure and then I'm releasing the pressure. And I'm using the shape of Alyssa's head to create that. Pressure, less pressure. I'm gonna block the ends. And then I'm just gonna come back in on each side just to strengthen up that area. Oh, I love that effect that's happening here. Oh, and, and, nice. and then what we're gonna do now is the, the model that I colored Angel in the last part one of the American Salon main entrance mashup is uh, more from the Obilux. So DJ is gonna cut Angel's hair so you can really see what that looks like as an end result. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep layering over this until I get that desired end result. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I know it's, this is kind of an unorthodox approach and I'm sure that you guys are like, what the what is that gonna look like? But it really is less scary than it feels. So what I'm gonna do now is basically, I've combed Alyssa's hair basically into the shape that it's gonna be roughly be styled into. And when DJ's done putting Angel's hair, basically we're just gonna let this air dry into her hair and then it becomes a stain. And it's the porosity that allows that to happen. And see, you can see here, you wanna get a close up right in here, Larry? 
that you can start to see you have the violet, the silver, and it's all working in together. So it's really more creating shape because with color, dark colors recede and lighter colors come forward. So what we're doing is with this watercolor, we're almost creating dimensional tone, but it's very subtle. So it's, it's not anything that's gonna be super crazy. You don't wanna do this with like black and bleach. That would be like a real bad idea. So this is definitely more of a watercolor type of vibe. And again, you know, important to just keep your client's head down. This is not anything toxic, so it's not gonna be a problem. And you can feel free also to comb through it because it's not necessarily something that is not movable. You want it to like bleed and move. So you can see as I work through that, the areas that are a little bit more intense and a little bit less intense. And now as this dries, I might also, if I feel like I wanna add a little bit more, I can layer a little bit more back over that. So it's something that's very visual. And I think, you know, as colorists, whenever we're coloring here, we're usually using one side of our brain, like the, the baking side, I would say. And when you're doing this, you wanna use more of like that kind of evolutionary side where you're looking at it all the time, adding more where it needs, adding less or not adding any more where it doesn't need it. So we're just gonna to start to let that dry in. I'm gonna go ahead and bring Angel over and have Alyssa switch out. Thank you, Alyssa. And then before DJ gets started, I'll go ahead and just recap a little bit on what we did on Angel's hair, just in case you didn't catch the first part of the demonstration. So with Angel, what we worked on was more of an Obilux feeling. So Obilux is very inspired by kind of lingerie as outerwear. So it's kind of that lingerie, daytime, nighttime, daytime play. And also a lot of uh, Japanese inspiration. So if you think of the Obis that go around a kimono, that's what we're really, really inspired by in terms of the luxury and the finishing of how we place this. So we use a deep raspberry for the base, a midnight violet, and a peacock green. And what we did was use C curvatures in a color placement through the focal point where DJ is gonna work. So I'm just gonna have DJ come over now and take over for you guys. All right, guys. So moving right along. Okay, can you use that prep spray? Yes. Alright guys, so I'm going to start once again. Obviously this trend right here is going to be Obilux. So just to kind of give you just a little bit of the layout of the, of the cut, we're going to start off by actually coming in. We separate it using a, utilizing a diamond shaped section. Now the key thing when you want to use a sectioning pattern like this is to really accentuate. You notice where the points of the diamonds are. I'm going to get that extra length that's coming there as well as on the corners I get some of that extra length. And what that does is gives me a nice silhouette. So just by sectioning off the diamond, I isolate the top of the haircut from the perimeter of the haircut. So what I want to do is start off in the back area. I'm just gonna get the hair prepped a little bit with just some prep spray. And inside of this, I'm using the Serene Hydration Spray from EDA Cosmetics from Hair, Cosmetics for Hair. And this is the bottle like this, guys. So it's really great on just rehydrating that hair because I'm working with it. All right. Now, the one key rule of thumb whenever you're working, your techniques is making sure that you have the hair hydrated. Great, can you get my water bottle? Yes. Yeah. And then uh, from there, starting out right in the back. I'm just gonna start right from that point. And I'm just gonna turn just to the light just a bit so you guys can really just get that. And from there, just a nice vertical section, starting out first just to kind of create a short to long type of filling by utilizing a technique that we call control slicing. So with this, we're just gonna make sure the hair is straight out at 90, angling the blade, just closing a little bit just to give us a little dimension. Perfect. And now, just gonna continue moving along with it. Same technique. Vertical sections, or should I say slightly diagonal sections, because as I move around here, you're gonna notice that I'm slightly angling to kind of create that type of short to long feel. Guys, notice where my finger position is, making sure I'm coming from the underneath, and then I can see my guide, and from there, notice I'm going in between the hair. This is what I mean by collapsing, collapsing that weight to give it a nice, a nice texture that's in there. You can see how it still maintains that length, but it gives me that decrease in weight happening around the sides. And DJ, just 
just going to take a moment. Natasha had asked about that pigment washing out in one shampoo. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Especially on that light of hair. And as much as I diluted it, it would totally wash out in one shampoo. So it's very temporary, but it's fantastic as a service for those clients that want to try something, but maybe they're professional and they don't want to do that at work, but they can do that on the weekend. So it's more of a service like you would do like a red carpet look or like an updo, like an event service. It's just for a session. All right, guys. So right now just going through and breaking through that hair collapsing and then working from short to long. So you see, just so that the hair pushes in a little bit. She has magnificent texture, so I really want to work off of that texture. So once again, that's diagonal sections, slight diagonals, stopping right at the air area. That last section, I just over-directed just a tad. You can see there, just about here. And then coming back, starting at that bottom base. But I'm always short to long inside of each section. Short to long, short to long, you see? So that has constantly pushing the other on the opposite side. So we're just gonna approach the same way. I'm just gonna turn it around a bit. Finger position the same way, guys. Just kinda coming in, making sure those Lines and sections are clean. And getting right into detail. And you'll notice, guys, I'm really opening up to the deepest point of the blade when I work this technique. That's really key. And then from there, short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long. All right, that technique is control slicing. And then as I move to the sides, slightly that diagonal. Now, the whole concept of Obi Lux, which is the trend that her haircut is in and her finish will be in, is, is to kind of bring more of like a, a think of warrior-esque type of feeling when you think of like the ornamentations. So by creating a texture inside of the hair, what happens is that you kind of create this ornamentative type of feeling. So when I think ornaments, like when you see all the crown and the molding and things of that nature, think about the wave patterns and the curls. So that's what that short to long is going to give me inside of that. Now, coming towards the fringe, when I approach that, you guys are gonna notice, that's gonna move into more of the luxury department. So it goes from like that, that ornamentative feeling to more of that like, think of a shield, like a warrior with a shield, so more of that type of nice shielding right there to create that really luxe finish that you see when something's polished. And that color really helps to kind of bring that out more. Once again, short to long. And with the trends, DJ, I feel like with color, you know, there is a color palette for each of these trends. And then you take that color palette and you kind of adapt it to your client. So maybe it's mixing warm and cool. In this case with Angel, what we did when, and what you'll start to see is DJ is working towards the front, is that we really took inspiration from using tones that were a similar level, but very different in tonality. So you see that very luxury, luscious uh, switch in tonality. And do you take inspiration into your sectioning patterns or the shape? How do you interpret it, DJ? Well, it's kind of the same thing. Like, I always think about that, that ornament standpoint when I think of like, oh, okay, like the design element of it. I always think of the silhouettes of things that I see. So, you know, once again, you can see just from even having the diamond section here, it's almost like she has a shield, right? And then coming into this, this like body armor on the shoulder, just creating that nice strength there. You guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this last bit as I collapse. Short to long feeling. And that's just giving me that intimate and texture, guys. So you can see how that really flows around the back. Now I'm going to filter this out some. So when I say filter, that means just kind of come through the whole thing and do a brick layering technique. So normally I would have my model come down like this, comb the hair down, and then combing that hair over and then filtering through. You see that? Same here. Moving that excess out the way. Always trying to make sure to work clean so you know where you're starting and finishing at. And then from there, you can just see that filtering through. Just creating that looseness inside. We're gonna do that last section here and then work the same on the opposite. If you guys have any questions on these techniques, feel free to drop us a line. And also join us for the masterclass. Uh, in Vegas that we'll be out there for those of you that want more of a thorough explanation of the way we uh, do our hairdressing concepts here. Yeah, IBS Las Vegas is next weekend, so it's going to be the 
4th through the 26th, and our master class is on Monday. We have a main stage presentation on Sunday, so please join us as we take the trends from editorial to tour, ready to wear, and underground. You're gonna see all variations of that. Because what we're all about is making sure that you can take your clients to being on trend and not trendy. So it works for them, for their lifestyle, no matter if they're mature, if they're younger, if they're couture, or if they're underground. It really all has a scale. All right, guys, so we finished out filtering that back area. You can just kind of see from the profile, you see all that filtering that took place. So it's nice and soft, but it still has some good length on it. And I think that's what it's all about, giving that, that really nice transition of a feeling when it comes to texture. And DJ, can you, uh, Aaron was talking about the under the comb cutting, and mm -hmm. why do you choose to work that way? Is there something that it gives you that is different from Well, you know what, it, it, oh, that's a good question. You know what it does? It, it actually textures the hair from underneath versus from the top. And I think that's the reason for me actually taking the hair. It means I'm flipping that hair underneath up and I expose that to filter that out versus texturizing too much from the top. So it just gives a whole different way of where that weight is collapsed. I want to create uh, the, the collapse coming from underneath versus wiping out my top area. So that's really what that technique works quite well for. And that's what you're saying filtering is. Right, that's what filtering is. All right. We're gonna move into the fringe area, guys, and lock this in. Just re-wetting that down, making sure that I can control that hair. Now, this is the focal point for the haircut that we're working on right now. So, with this, my main thing is making sure that I work clean and precise throughout this area. So that's why I'm making sure that I moisturize the hair as much as possible so I can manipulate it and control it. And DJ, is there a certain level of moisture that you're looking for when you're working with different textures or is it the same with whether it's curly or straight? Well, it's mainly really just looking for enough moisture to weigh down on the actual hair pattern. So that way, the way that it gets, you know, it kind of just weighs down so it gives me a little bit more control. And that's what I'm looking for. Not really dripping wet or anything like that. It's more to give some weight to that front area. So the first section I'm gonna take is combing the hair straight out and coming from underneath. And then just cutting that short to long so that way the top will flow over and you have a shorter bit underneath. So I'll explain that to you just a bit more. My fingers angled where I'm decreasing in length as it goes towards the head shape. I'm just gonna come in, cut at that angle. What happens, that shorter piece stops there and the longer piece overlaps that. So therefore your fringes always fall quite nice for you whenever you're working that way. Next section, just gonna take that, over direct it, same way for the fringe. A lot of people, you know, fringes are quite popular right now and I think just changing the way you approach them will help give you a different type of finish when it comes to creating a nice fringe. Doing that same technique. DJ, when you're working with fringes, is there a certain tension that you choose to use depending on the hair type? Or use the same tension with curly hair and straight? Uh, I think the thing with uh, tension, how natural do you want that fringe to fall? So I think making sure that she has the hair naturally wants to give her a nice fall. So I don't want to over tension it and then make it do something that it doesn't naturally want to do. And I think that's kind of like a faux pas that happens sometimes in fringes. If you over direct and get a certain way, you don't really want it to fall that way. You loosen up the way you hold it and make sure you direct it. So just work on the opposite side, still utilizing the same technique. And we just had Zawiki join us. What up, Zawiki? What up, Zawiki? Zawiki? And you DJ, so that's, that's one for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, as we move into the sides, same thing, over directing and just collapsing as I'm working. So you can see it starts, that fringe starts to really open up a bit more. The last section. DJ, Erin is asking, with wet hair, how do you control the crazy growth patterns that might happen in the fringe area? When the hair is with when wet hair? Wet. Well, the thing is making sure that I have enough density inside of my sectioning. Because the thing is, if like you're working with the hair and it's wet, but it's still crazy, maybe you don't have enough hair 
on top of that fringe area or that isolated area that's going to give you the control that, that's necessary for what you're trying to create. So really making sure that you have enough, uh, enough of a section to where it actually can control that bit that could be overpowering inside of your fringes. Because it is a problem area if you don't have enough, like let's say if I took a fringe area and I only had that amount, right? That's too small of a fringe. You know what we call these? Fringettes. You don't want a fringette. You want a fucking fringe. Oh, excuse my language. American? <laughs> all right. We'll so, that later. All right. So then coming onto the sides, I'm just going to make sure that I keep on cleaning that up a bit as I'm working even more down. So you notice I'm working that technique all the way into her side panels. Last section. Still working from short to long. Notice that angle, guys. You see that angle? And I'm just going to work that guide into that. There we go. And you can see how nice that really frames the face when it comes to your fringes. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I love the disconnection, DJ, of, or not necessarily disconnection, but the transition between that really strong fringe into the softer edges. And I feel like with Obilux, that's such an element of what the trend is. It's that softness of, you know, kind of loungewear and yes. lingerie side combined with the strength of more of that Eastern culture, the Asian culture of just that strength of almost a samurai type of feel. Exactly. And it's like understanding those balances between those worlds is what's really key when you utilize you know, like trend-based education and trend-based hairdressing. So you really start to understand, what do those words mean? How do they really make sense for what's happening? And that's what our education is all about, guys, helping you make sense of that vast world of, like, beauty and uh, design that's out there. So you can see how that fringe just kind of frames her face, but it's kind of more of a softer feeling, right? And then we're going to have that strength coming from the top. I'll pass these. It's very, there we go. Now for that top area, guys. I'm just gonna come through. And DJ, how do you decide, even on that sectioning pattern, of having that type of diamond through the crown? Well, on the exaggeration, it's the, orna it's the ornament of filling that I'm really trying to showcase when I do that. So sometimes, guys, when I'm working, I love exaggerating my partings a bit more, just because it makes the haircut breathe a bit as well. It's like the more swing my sections have, the more swing that my haircut will have. So think about that sometimes when you're parting. Like, you know, if you're building graduation and you're stacking it, your hair is going to actually emulate that. So the same thing goes for people creating zigzags and things of that nature. So this next section, just going to bring all of that over. And this is just an inversion technique, guys. Just inverting that right back into the center and control slicing. So I'll show you guys that again. All right, so that gives us a nice feeling going right into that fringe area. We're gonna do the same way on the opposite side. Body position, changing up. And just making sure that we get rid of any excess hair is really key. And finger position coming from on the bottom. And same technique. key thing is control, guys. So I'm making sure I control that hair as I'm working it out. All right, filtering just some of this area. Just coming around, making sure I just move that shape around and then I'm just filtering out just a bit. We still want that softer feeling, but with more of that exaggerated control. So it really gives us that Obilux type of a feeling. All right, guys, as I'm working to this side, same technique, just filtering just a little bit more. And when I say that, guys, I mean filtering in the classic sense, just slowly lifting my fingers up as I filter through that fringe. So I can really start to see it. Now with that being said, I'm gonna just now take my guide 
that I created from this top area. So you see that guy, we're gonna take that to the back and just do just a round, rounding layering technique, just kind of slicing out, breaking up in between that. Just so it gives us a soft transition so that our hair grows out and it still has a nice filling. So once again, I'm just using that back, uh, that top front guide and using it for the back area. Just adding some softness with slicing. You guys notice the way I slice the hair, just making sure that I have enough space, closing the blade first on my skin and then pushing the blade out. So that way it gives me a nice feeling whenever I'm doing it. I'm gonna do the same way on the opposite side. We have any questions, Barry? No questions right now, but right. we're starting to see how the shape is coming together and, okay. and also the color. And I think uh, Leslie was just commenting on the color, which I'm not sure if you saw part one, Leslie, and you can always go back to check that out to see how we achieved the color. But what we did was really also being inspired by the Obilux trend, not only in sectioning pattern, but as well with our color choice. So we have a dark raspberry for the base, which is a level four. Red Violet from Schwarzkopf mixed at a higher mixing ratio, so it was a little bit more translucent. And then we also had some pre-lightened areas in the front, which we then worked a color blocking section using crescent shapes with a Midnight Violet as well as a Peacock Green. And those were created with Cravana, just mi mixing a custom tone, as well as mixing a little bit of conditioner in with, with inside that to lighten up just a little bit. And this is an example of what you'll see when you come to one of our classes, whether it's IBS Las Vegas, the master class, or a demonstration, or even if you come to see us here in New York, we always base all of our demos off of trends. So I would say from a color point of view that this would be more of a ready-to-wear version of OB Lux. So we always, inside the trends, have a couture version, a ready-to-wear version, and then more of an underground version. And with your clients, you can think about that, you know, that pretty much works in that same way. You have clients that are edgy, clients that are classic, and then clients that are more mature, kind of taking it all the way there. All right, guys, so now we're just going to go through the finish. Big shout out to our Biza, our boys out there, Aaron. This is their brush right here I'm using. And I'm just going to flat wrap it from side to side. With just the focus on that fringe area. Once we have that locked in, we're just going to go right back into the fringe and then refine that shape just a bit more when we're working with it. So we're just going to refine it a bit once we get that smoothed out. Making sure I really get close to the roots and get that hair nice and smooth, which is really key for this type of a shape. So you can see with the color placement as you guys working, that's really where we focused everything was right in that front. And it's really one of those more luxurious type of coloring patterns. So the sections that we're taking are quite large, but the tones are all on the same level. So it's more of a similar pattern in terms of you need to take the sections large enough to be able to see that difference in color. So you're really getting that very luxurious feeling, almost as if it's a silk kimono. All right guys, we're just trying to polish this up some. The colors are really popping out now, so I'm really like paying attention now to like, where do I want to go back in detail a little bit more? Where do I want to filter out some of this shape a little bit more? So right when I'm finishing out, that's when I really start thinking about all the ways I can manipulate this and show the client that her hair has versatility. So I'm just gonna flat wrap it a bit here. Yeah, you know what? So I started out with the product line that I'm using is called EDA Cosmetics for Hair. And so right now you can see that finish. We talked about the prep spray a little bit. Once again, the product is called EDA Cosmetics for Hair. So I, I started with this, and this is prep, but it gives like a nice satin finish to the hair. So that works really well. So I'm just using that in the hair first, and then I use the fabric spray so that it can actually thicken the hair a little bit more. And so the fabric spray is great for creating texture, it's a non-aerosol spray. And once again, the company is EDA Cosmetics for Hair, which is my product line, so I definitely recommend it for you guys out there. And uh, so I'm just gonna finish with this, guys, and let you see a bit more of how that's gonna start off. Okay, you can type the uh, site on there.
All right, guys, right now, let's get it right to the front. All right, they're trying to iron on you. You guys can just see that coolness that's sticking in there. And I'm gonna work that all the way to the ear. Just getting in there tighter. There we go. Uh, Derek was just giving me a Derek Maldonado was giving a shout out to being awesome. Oh, what's up, Dee? Thanks for joining us, Derek, out there. Did a great job when you did something with Elevate Hair just recently. So big shout out to Elevate. Big shout out to Hair Brand, still part of their community out there. And of course, Gordon. Hope you're watching, Gordon and Win American Salon, as well as Courtney. It's a great opportunity to be here with you guys, sharing this new type of education of really just focusing on trends and really making it a bit more versatile. And you know, the whole reason that we started to work into trend forecasting for not only the beauty industry, but also for us as hairdressers, is to share the wealth of information that's out there in the trend forecasting world, because this is, trend forecasting is something that exists for designers, for even, you know, beauty brands to decide where they're going to take their products. So us as hairdressers and as artists, we're basically designers as well. So what we wanted to do with Main Entrance was really give you guys the main entrance into that world, that world of trends, that world of trend forecasting, and empower you guys to, with the information to know where all these designers are pulling things from. So you can take that share it with your client and really be able to define your vision, whether it's working on a photo shoot, working on your client, or even your personal inspiration for what you want to be in that season. That's the whole reason that we started to work from a trend focused point of view. All right guys, so I'm doing this on the dry side, and then I'll come in with just the iron, just to kind of refine that front area before I actually do everything else. gonna add just a little bit of this. This is called liquid light before I use the iron, just a drop of that. It's like a dry serum from the EDA as well. And before I go with the heat, I'm just gonna dust it with some of that product a little bit. And then from there, we come in with the iron and then just create that smoothness so that we can refine this fringe area. And I think that's the key thing, you know, you don't just stop and when the hair is wet, when you're kind of doing your fringes, you want to make sure that you see them all the way through to the end. And so that's what we make sure that we do is prep the hair so it's nice and smooth. And her hair is quite thick, if you guys are wondering. She has a nice amount of hair in this area, which is great for this type of a look. So that's why this look actually complements her really well. So Angel is great for this. As I'm coming to the sides, refining that a little bit more as well. Guys, notice I use the comb and then the iron is coming right behind it just to give me a more of a control type of a filling as I come down with that fringe. All right. If you guys have any questions on how this was achieved, feel free. And even for you guys that are going to watch later, if it's not live and you're coming back to it, just, you know, comment and we'll come back and try to answer any questions that you might have along the way. You can really see as you get starting to work into that fringe and that focal point, that that placement of where we placed that first crescent was really important. And if you work with a team and you're working with cut and color separately, or even if you're just doing everything yourself, you really need to take the time to figure out exactly where things are going to lay instead of trying to figure it out along the way because that is what makes or breaks the overall look, is making sure that you're in alignment with the focal point as well as the overall feeling of what you're trying to achieve. So you can see that even though we were taking really large sections in the last segment, that basically what happened is that that all blends together. It melts together and basically creates a fabric-like effect. It looks like a silk texture, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. All right, guys, as I move into the sides, just getting this area in. And with the back, once I'm done, I'll show you how I prep that just to make the marriage happen in terms of it finishing. I think finishing is just like a very big, big part of our industry. 
And I think the more we maximize on strengthening up our finishing skills, the more creative you can become with haircuts. I think sometimes the finishing ability can limit your ability to do the haircuts that will help give you different options out there. So I think always challenging yourself with uh, refining your finishing skills. We have a course called Effortless Essentials where we actually go through finishing skills and as well as key color techniques that work for those type of skills. And, and trends basically play into all of our all of our courses. So whether it's effortless essentials, it's how to create an effortless look within some of these trends that you see going on, but also really key focuses on techniques and how you can create balayage-like effects but with more control. How you can create some of these feelings that are very popular but be able to scale with it and scale with your clients. And not only that, but know what finishing techniques work really well with which coloring techniques, so you'll be able to sell them completely to your client. All right, guys, now that I've finished up with that, I'm just going to come back in with my scissors and then just manipulate that fringe a bit more. So if you guys have any questions, I'm just going to start from the top with this, making sure that her chin is slightly up higher, so I'm always saying chin up. And then from there, we just come in and just refine that fringe a little bit more. been working on this for those of you that are just tuning in previously I worked on the cut that he did in part one and so Alyssa has been processing we did a technique where we just let the color just dry into our hair so right as we finish we'll bring her back out so you can see both of the looks and the feelings together all right guys so you can see we're just refining that fringe just making sure you get right where you need to just getting right up under there just to create that really strong type of a look with it, you know. Coming on this side, same feeling. And I always tell people, take your time when you're working on fringes. There's no rush, you know. Just make sure you get it in. And it's the focal point of your shape, so when it comes to that, you want to make sure that you do all you can do to really refine that and get that the way you want it. For me, longer blades work out quite well when I'm working with the longer blades just because I can really cover a lot more of the ground. And DJ, uh, Kimo is wondering what brand of shears you're using. Koawa. They are called Koawa. And um, I got them from Shear World, but they're a Japanese brand blade. I don't know if you can see on that logo right there, just so you guys know what to look for. All right, so it's really good, but you know, and like I said, someone was asking about how often do I sharpen the shears. I'm more so how often do I clean my shears. I clean my shears every day, so therefore it kind of keeps me from needing to sharpen it all the time. So I'm always looking out for making sure that I work with my shears a certain way. I want to keep them really nice and fresh for me when I'm working. All right, guys, so now that we have that fringe area in there, you can just kind of see how it gives the framing in it. So now we're just going to go through the top of it, and I'll feel the through with my finishing technique with that. And, and you know, Leslie was saying that this is reminding her of a very modern twist on the Meg Ryan type of feel. And absolutely, it's all about creating updates that are on trend with timeless, classic looks that clients love. It's, you know, being on trend doesn't mean that it has to be something that's crazy, something that's different, like totally obscure. It just means that it has relevance and you know where it came from. It allows you to be able to find your vision to your clients and ready to go, but still be able to satisfy them while, while hoping to enter them into another part of their comfort, expand their comfort and style. All right, guys, so we're just kind of like going through the crown and just doing some twists, blow drying, the round brush, just to kind of give it just some smoother movement and to kind of create that flowing texture that's starting. You can start to see it start to soften out a little bit, so that gives that softness and then it'll go into more of that stronger edge happening along with that fringe area. Finish this that 
we created that focal point with the color here in the front. And you know, if you heard him speaking earlier, almost about thinking about that type of armor, armor or ornamentation, you can see that we really created that feeling here in the front by bringing the strength of darker tones into it rather than bringing lighter tones. Kind of making it grounded in a sense and luxury by it. You see that kind of really midnight violet come in and just hints of that peacock green. But it's subtle, it's, it doesn't have to be overstated. Color that's a little bit more positive, more of you know an unusual tone can also be sophisticated. It doesn't have to be done in a sense in a way where it's just very unicorn or rainbow, which is like, which is on trend also, but it doesn't only have to be that. You can use it in a way that's more sophisticated, and that's what we've done by transitioning it into a ready-to-wear look with Obi Lux. All right, guys, so you see, I dried it a little bit to get the volume, and then I'm just going right back in with the prep spray, just to give it just that bit of reformation of the curls, so you can see that shape start to come out a bit. Barry, can you get my uh, Wise Park freezer? Yeah, there we go. So from that front, you can guys can start to see that shape really take place in the hair. And then just some of that natural curl come back in. And it's just a different take on like how to really prep shorter haircuts, especially that's going through like growing out phases, but to really make it look on trend and create that feeling, right? So after I do that, I come in with the fabric. And most people say, well, why do you dry the hair a little bit before you re-wet it down? Well, it's so that it's not too flat to the head. I think that's what a lot of people don't want. It's where it's just too flat. You just want some kind of dimension in it. So you can see with that, just spraying a non-aerosol. And now you can start to see her hair starts to take shape a little bit. And then going in with the wise part. This is my horse feeder, guys. This is my wise part. This right here I just used to come in and set the hair again. And you can just kind of see, just really giving that nice molded feeling, but still airing it out so it has that bit of luxury to it. You know, it makes it a bit more modern, a bit more cool, and also it has a bit more versatility. All right, just molding that right there. Once I get that just shaped out the way I want, just letting the perimeter dry a little bit more inside of there. So guys, my next model, I'm just gonna bring her out and I'm just gonna finish the finish uh, touches on Alyssa, which is a um, Miller Mask model. And right here we have our Obi Lux. Obi Lux ready to wear. Ready to wear. All right, so now with that, I'm just gonna do this one thing there before you do that. Yeah, no problem. And guys, we really, that's why we wanted to do these two parts, part one and part two for you, because what we're all about is creating a total feeling and a total vibe. And we talked to the models about what they personally felt like they were into this season and what their personal style was. And that's really the basis of how we create and how we work together. So we wanted to make sure that we did part one and part two so you could see all of it come together in the end. So guys, what I'm spraying right now is the Brilliant Spray from EDA. Just spraying that on just my Kabuki, and that's gonna be just that, as that shine element. And it's a trick that I use when I'm doing my shoots a lot. Just oh, to kind of get in there. Yeah, Pat, it's been a while. There we go. So, once again, this right here is just a breakdown of that uh, particular Obilux type of a trend. So we do them all together. Like, should I go ahead and start on yeah, her first, right? Absolutely. All right, we're gonna have her go and then we'll do this next one we'll bring and then bring it back, back together. together. All right, you can come on over. Okay. All right, so now we have Alyssa here. You can see the color that Barry did on that shape. Oh, that's really nice. So now, I'm just gonna rebuild that uh, texture a little bit up for, right? We want more of that matte feel. So just going in, we have that prep spray using that Serene all around everywhere. It's a refresher, so it's really great for uh, protein. But then I backdoor it with the fabric spray. 
Barry just colored this for those of you guys that missed it, but you can check that out as well. This right here is for texture. And so once we have that in, let me go ahead and just blast it out. And you can see with the haircut, just to show you guys a little bit, I started out with diagonal back sections. And then from the diagonal back sections, I went into the top and utilized just the control slicing element inside of her top area to create a nice feeling with that. Just so that she has some more movement in it. So right now we're just gonna blast it out. And I'm really power drying this hair really to get at those roots and let that fabric spray really start to give it that texture. So you'll notice right now, you see the fabric spray is working, so I'm starting to lift up at the sides. So you see, that's really getting it into more of that, that military type of a feeling, right? Where it's more of that thrasher type of hair, giving that that strong element. And as Vicky was saying, you know, what we did actually was use a direct pigment color and really diluted that with water to create a watercolor. And we left that in the hair. So as Vicky has been cutting Angel's hair, basically that's just been sitting in Elizabeth's hair and starting to dry and we just let that kind of soak in. So this will probably last one, maybe two shampoos. So it's really more of a temporary vibe, but it's creating tonality in a, in a session way. So for a particular set or reason, but it's not something that lasts forever. So it's a great intro into doing different types of color for your clients, uh, but also it's something that will only work when you're working with lighter tones of hair. And guys, this is cool because it gives it a nice texture with that overlay of the color that Barry used with that, that technique. Like just that sponge in itself, which is mixing up with the product to help give it just more of this really cool feeling that's happening with that. Uh, and we just had a question from Leslie. If we do classes in North Carolina, absolutely. We will come to you. Let us know. We're at manageantsartist.com or you can reach out to us through Instagram. Uh, we're here at the main, which is our, our home in NYC. We use it as our photography studio, as our academy, and also as, uh, as a home for artists and residents, different artists coming in. So, you know, let us know we have an educational calendar that's out already. Like we said, we'll be in Vegas for Masterclass and Main Stage, but if you want us to come to you, uh, we're down to North Carolina. Yeah, it's good food in North Carolina. Yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. Nice. All I can think about is eating when it comes to it. So, <laughs> guys, you can see now I'm just going in with that top area and then that natural, just letting that natural texture kick in and kind of scrunching that bit up a bit more. Just letting that texture take over. So this is basically just using my fingers and letting that texture really flow with it. And then just getting at those roots a bit. And then I'm just going to come back through. Once again, big shout out to my boys at Ibiza. Just going in with their Denman, and then just kind of, just to help give me just a bit more smooth shape here. We heard from uh, Kevin in Turkey, PA. Oh. Oh. We'll do it again. Kevin Kev. All right. Let's go. I think I want to even switch up my finish with it. I'm going to go with this. So I'm just going to use a spinning technique, guys, where I just take the hair and I'm spinning it as I'm coming down. That's just going to help me to just create just a little kick when I'm working. Spinning the hair as I come down. Side, just gonna do that same technique just to showcase it a bit more. Where we place more of that silver tone, it's just basically a heavier deposit of the tone that she already has as a toner. And what we toned uh, Alyssa's hair with was. 9D and 9P from Red King Shades EQ. And we did that yesterday. And what we've done is basically just make a darker version of that with a temporary color to accentuate the squareness. 
and then just adding a little bit of the tone in with the violet. So you can see it's a very subtle technique, but it's a great intro into color as well as a way for you to be able to experiment as a colorist in a different way to where you're thinking about color differently and that will help you kind of expand your formulation and, and just kind of bring some more creativity into your everyday salon life. Alright guys, just pulling through, spinning off. And then do this too. There we go. Alright, so now we have that hair pretty much on the dry side. Nice movement in it. Nice and soft. And the reason why I did the, the turning technique with the brush is just to kind of give it just some kicks in certain places. You guys can kind of see that way that front is starting to flow with it. Just kind of giving it just that bit of like touch of, of like really strength but still with that strong feminism type of effect happening in that front area. You guys can kind of see where that hair wants to wave back. Just making sure that when I finish, I'm thinking about what am I really trying to showcase here? Now we're just going to pull that off some. Yeah, there we go. Filtering that out. You see, just adding cool air from the back just to kind of get that in there a bit more. All right, let me get that fabric again. All right, then let's spray a little bit more of that. And you guys can just see how that gives that really nice feeling right there. Very feminine, but like quite. It's really nice for the color. You have that type of feeling with it. You know, once again, that's fabric spray, guys. You want something that's soft that gives that feeling. Now, I'm gonna go in with uh, just on the kabuki and just here. Just really giving that texture a bit more showcasing right here. Then around that front, just giving it more of that type of a quiff effect that you guys see. And I love that mashup of how soft the tones are and how soft the length is, but with that square vibe, it gives it that masculine feminine play. Totally. I'm just going to go back through and uh, bring in both of the girls. You know. Angel, you want to come back over? Right now, I'm just going to use a little bit of this. This is called Serene. That's just like a soft paste. Yeah, all right. Let's take a little bit of that. Have a hold of that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, just kind of finishing touches off of that texture a little bit. You know, just really working softly with it. But it's still so youthful, so, so feminine. But yet, it still has that bit of like thrasher to it where, you know, it's like, bit more rough around the edges a bit. But it's still that sense of control that's there. All right, I'm gonna have you go ahead and stand up. And Larry, I'm gonna get with it in a light right here, mm -hmm. right here. Okay. And we'll get the two here. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so with that being said, let's see. So that's a good feeling of what we've been working on today. So Barry, wanna break down a little bit of what you did? Yeah, absolutely. So with Angel working with Obi Lux and a ready to wear version, color blocking through the front, working with dark raspberries, uh, midnight violet, and peacock green for a very subtle color placement that really is taking inspiration from a silk kimono and that type of vibe. And then with uh, Alyssa, working more of a millimash feeling, pre-lightening first, and then working dimensionally with a temporary color, working with session color, with cooler tones, making you think almost of a brushed metal, just to create and emphasize the texture that DJs put in. All right, guys, so with that, that's our filling. This right here is our Miller Mash, and that's a, one of our fillings for the trends that you guys are going to see, as well as... As Obi Lux. Hope to see you guys in Vegas next weekend. All right, big shout out American Salon. You know what, Gordon, wish you was here in town. Courtney, thanks so much for everything. Big shout out to the whole community, IBS, everyone that's out there. Check us out. Bye. All right, later.